it's another week and we are here for our normal PLC session. Before we begin, Apostle, please take us to a short prayer. to share our ideas, we pray and we ask for knowledge, wisdom and understanding. So when we finish everything successfully, we have the course to give you glory. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray down to you. Amen. Amen. Aha! Let's do a recap of what we did in our previous session on CPD. So, Madam Sandra will take us to the learning outcome. Demonstrate knowledge and understanding of continuous professional development. Good. Madam Jemima will help us with learning indicator two. Our learning indicator two was how you apply the learning, the CPD in your teaching and learning. All right, very good. That's nice. So, what is CPD? Okay, say. CPD is continuous professional development and the meaning is the process where members of a particular profession look for knowledge and then skills to improve upon the work that they do. Very good. Madam Sandra, you are in Fufu Group, right? So please share the LO with us. Okay, so our learning outcome was demonstration knowledge and understanding of continuous professional development. Good. Kenke, so Madam Jenny said from the Kenke group. Our learning indicator for our last meeting was eight reasons why CPD is important to the teacher. Okay, then Madam Jemima will help us with learning indicator two. Our learning indicator two was how you apply CPD in your teaching and learning. Okay, so that's good. Now, what did you do differently on professional development in our lessons when we went back to the classroom? What did you do differently on it? Please share with us. In fact, everyone will have to share with us. We want to know so that we can also do the same in our classrooms. So, Madam, okay, author group, I think there's a member there to share with us. Yes, Madam. I use the ICT to teach jollyfonies in my class. Okay, that's nice. Okay, a member from the KNK group. So I used the projector to project a frequency on butter training. Butter training. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, another KNK member. And using the gesture which is gender, equity, and social inclusion, I was able to then give the community equally among all kinds of people. Okay, that's good. Fufu group, what do you have for us? Share with us what you did in your classroom. All right, so on, uh, on uh, ICT, uh, before I went to the class to teach Commission of Rain for uh, our Commission of Rain, I went online and I got information, a lot of information before I went to the class to teach. Okay, that's, that's nice. Okay, Kenke Group. Okay, that's fine. Aha, uh -huh, Tisa, it's none of you have spoken. Can you share with us? Um, I also gave input. I also gave my learners an assignment to go and research with their phones and computers at home so that they will come back the next day to present your presentation on it. Okay, that's fine. Uh -huh, and I need another member from the TZ group. Another member. It seems you are too dull for my liking. Okay, 
leadership is. I delegated the leadership list to the students. I varied the perfect acting. We alternated them. So this week, if myself and Seth Frank are the class work, the following week we change them. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. Any other? In, okay, say. Yeah. Okay, so I group learners and then give them problems to think about and then solve. So they came out with their findings. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's wonderful. Aha, uh -huh, madam. The same grouping it enhances their communication and collaboration skills. Oh, okay. That's that's fine. Interesting. Any other? Okay, so in a simple sentence, what would you say your colleague, what he did, impacted teaching and learning or made teaching and learning? What, what do you think, what your colleague said did to impact teaching and learning in the classroom or enhance teaching and learning in the classroom? Hey, can you group it? Wow. Some of us do not want to talk. In fact, after this session, I will give. Um, 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 I won't say it. Uh huh. So, shall we continue? Okay, but I would not say that the way that the internet is going to say, as a teacher, it gives you a lot of content and as well, giving you much more of what you are going to teach in the class. Okay, good. Very good. Uh huh. Simple short sentence. Uh -huh, it's easy for no. I can see. <laughs> Mr. Alfoy. The use of the projector makes the lesson lively and interesting. Okay. Madam. Okay. Applying Jesse in the classroom helps clear the learners' doubts about. Very good. Yes, say. From the author group. Yes. Grouping learners also enhances collaboration and tolerance. So when they work in groups where they tolerate each other, they tolerate uh, the views from each other. Okay. That's good. We have... Okay. More from TZ Group. So because the, the lesson becomes interesting, everyone gets on board. You think everyone is going to learn it. Oh, okay. All right. Any other? Okay, Sir Felix. The use of ICT to enable learners to be able to perform basic operational problems, especially in their numerous oh. of measurements and money. Oh, okay, that's wonderful. Any other? Uh huh, TZ, I can see you are now taking the lead. Excellent. Okay. The name of my activity is Alexa. Okay, so that is Alexa setting. Whenever you mention its name, response is whatever question you have to answer. So let me demonstrate quick. Alexa, um, what is 2 plus 2? Two? 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, so this is with mathematics. Okay, it's not only with mathematics, but all the subjects. So we can go to science. Now, Alexa, Alexa, what is the meaning of photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is usually defined as the complex process by which carbon dioxide, water, and certain inorganic salts are converted into carbohydrates by green plants, algae, and certain bacteria using energy from the sun and chlorophyll. Yes. Oh, that's that's a wonderful tool. Makes lesson 
That's, that's, that's nice. Thank you very much, Sir Josiah. Now, we'll go straight to the introduction of this session. And I will want Mr. Owusu to read and explain the purpose to us. The purpose for this session to us. The purpose of the lesson for now, or the purpose of the lesson, is to engage teachers on the content of a lesson plan, to enable them to analyze the plan, to enhance their understanding and application of different methods of teaching and assessment in order to improve their practice. Okay. So, All right, so can you explain to us, please? Yeah, so when we talk of a lesson plan, uh, I would say it's a map, something like a map, sort of. That guides a teacher on how he or she seeks to deliver the lesson uh, in a class. So when we talk of the lesson plan being a map, uh, it entails the teacher and learner resources that the teacher seeks to use. Uh, and this one is subject specific. Okay. So each subject, for example, if a teacher is teaching uh, construction or yeah, something like that, uh, it goes with the teacher and learning resources, let's say mathematical sets and the rest. Okay. And then also the methods of teaching. Yeah, and this one, the teacher has to take into consideration the level of the learners that he or she is teaching. So sure. uh, let's say a primary four class, the teacher allowed to use something like role play, uh, demonstration, those 21st century skills. Skills. Yeah. And then also the teacher has to take into consideration the core competencies that the teacher seeks to also instill into the learners. That's critical thinking and problem solving, digital literacy, and the rest. And then um, lastly, the assessments that mm -hmm. the teacher also seeks to give to the learners. And this one, the teacher has to um, make sure all the three forms are achieved. Okay. That is the assessment as, assessment for, and the assessment for. So all these things the teacher has to take into consideration when preparing the lesson plan. Good job. Good job. Thank you very much. In fact, I want us to give you a clap. What 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 clap do you want? Chinese clap. Chinese clap. Wow. You have to show us how to do this Chinese clap. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Thank you. So that is your Chinese club. Thank you very much. Now we're moving on to our next activity, which we, are, we will be going through Appendix 1. Appendix 1. So let's go to the sample lesson plan on mathematics for basic 4 and then read through. I'll be asking questions. So let's go through briefly. In the next five minutes, we will have to stop and then proceed with the questions. Okay, so we are reading through the sample lesson plan for five minutes and afterwards, I will ask questions. So let's do that briefly. In groups, in our various groups. All right, so shall we end here so that we can continue with the next activity? So, with what you have read and then discussed. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. So, what we are going to do again is discuss 
assessment as, assessment for, and assessment of in the lesson plan. And then you share with us. We, are, we have about three minutes to do that. We have about three minutes to do that. So where do we... Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up with our discussion. Okay, so let's share what we have. We will do that in groups. Let's share what we have. Auto group. Auto group, we are waiting. Yes. Have you wrapped up? Yes. Okay. Kenke, the Kenke group. Are you are you okay? Are you are you sure you are okay? TZ. TZ group, are you are you okay? Okay. So can we continue with our session? Fufu and Ebunebunu group, are you ready? Okay, so we are going to share with the class what we have. So we will start from, um, okay, we start from the auto group. What do you have for us? Okay. Yes. That is the phase one. It says engage learners in the double up game. The teacher fall out three and learners must fall out the double. What we are the strand is geometry and measurement. Okay. And then the sub strand is measurement into like a perimeter and area. So we are linking our data with our strand. What mm -hmm. link our data with the strand? So when you double up, you, you allow the learners to double. You just give any number and then they double up. Because you are going to do the measurement of a perimeter where you definitely get some numbers doubling up. So you do that and then you stir up the mind of learners. And um, so what type of assessment is this? Assessment as. Assessment as. Okay, that is when the learners, learners themselves bring out their ideas of what you are going to do. Very good, very good. That's wonderful. Uh-huh. So, okay, so we are taking all of the assessment as from each of the groups. Then we come to the next one, then we continue. Um... Kenke group, assessment as, what do you have for us? I, engage learners to compare a math set and an exercise to find out which one has the largest perimeter. Okay. okay so here you yeah, are, you want to know what they know and how you are going to build on it. Okay. So they have the mathematical set and the exercise group. You'll be able to say the one that has um, the bigger perimeter and the one that has the least perimeter. Okay. So it's assessment as because because the because the uh huh continue for me because the learners are they are comparing it and bringing out the answers. Okay. So because the learners are involved, they are coming out with those answers. It becomes assessment. Us. Uh, All right. Yeah, 
Okay, you want to add something? They are reflecting on their own. Okay. That's... They, they are doing their comparison on their own. So okay. They are reflecting this assessment as. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Um, Fufu Group, share with us your assessment as. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so what did they say? Okay, so um, um, we also came out with the I. Just as they said, they, just as they said, and they learned us to compare a math set and an exercise book to find out which one has the largest parameters. So over here is peer teaching. The okay. results will come out with um, what the teacher see actually. And then at the end, the teacher will get to know the idea they have concerning the lesson he or she wants to teach for the day. That's good. That's good. Um, which group hasn't shared assessment as? TZ, right? Okay, so we are listening to TZ. The TZ group. Oh, ma ma um, madam, in fact, hold on. Um, you've been talking too much, so I want um, Madam Vero to do the talking this time. Okay, we are also saying I is an assessment as. Just like you said, assessment as talks about self-assessment. You can see that it's talking about engaging learners to compare a math set and an exercise book to find out which one has the largest parameter. So here they are finding out on their own so that the teacher will build up on what they already know. Okay, that's that's fine. So quickly let's go to assessment. Okay, Sergio, do you have something for us? Alright, so let's move on to assessment four. Assessment four. This time round I will start from KNK. KNK group. Share with us assessment four in the lesson. Or in the phase two is the III. Let us use graph sheets 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters grid to explore the area of irregular cutout shapes. So now, Belena knows that a regular cutout shape, like a square or a rectangle, with the square, all the sizes are the same. So if you give Belena um, this, uh, this side, uh, the side, the side or all the Oh, yeah, the size of um, one uh, or one grain. Okay, they know that all the sizes will be the same, so they oh, okay. will just add up and get the answer. And if you give them a, a shape like um, rectangle, they know that the two opposite sides are the same. So you give, if you give them um, one at the one each at the opposite side, they will just add up, knowing that. Maybe let's say the longer side is six and the shorter side is two. They will know that the other one on the opposite side, which is the longer one, will be the same six. So they will just add up. But now we want them to know that irregular shapes also they do not have the same perimeter. So you give them another irregular shape, like maybe a pyramid, and you give them different sizes, and they will just add it up and know that. Irregular shape also have their size. Okay, so madam, what 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 makes what you have said assessment for? Here it is not stated expressly that we may do good work, but I, I I understand that as they are solving it, they may share whatever they have done with their friends. Okay. They are sharing it with their friends, sharing ideas with their friend. That makes it. Assessment four. Oh, okay. Yes. So sharing with their friends yes. makes it assessment four. Yeah. All right. Are we all okay? All right. Uh huh. Kenke, you wanted to add up? The learner is able to apply uh, the knowledge in the regular shape to that of the irregular. It means the learner is following whatever is going on. Because with the regular shape, they have size, all sizes equal. And the irregular, they have some sizes larger than the other. So if the child is able to 
also find the perimeter of the irregular shape. It means the person is paying attention to the lesson. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let me go to Fufu for your assessment for. All right. So we also uh, selected Ivy. Okay. As assessment for, and then we said. The same? Oh, okay. Thank you. Same people are answering the questions. So please, let's, let's all try to speak up, okay? We took the IV. Okay. The IV, you are saying it's assessment So why? Yeah, we believe the regular or irregular shapes with side length and axle length to sum up the side length of the regular. So in this one, I think that the teacher will give out um, shapes, cut out shapes, um, different um, the regular shapes and the regular shapes. Okay. So with this, I think the lens will measure. Some will measure the regular, uh, the length of the regular mm -hmm. shapes. Some will measure the length of the regular shapes. And with this, they will know that okay, um, finding the perimeter of the regular shapes. I mean, the the method will be different from um, finding the very good the the oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wusu, I can see yeah, you want to add that. Yeah, to also help the to assess the progress of work. Oh, okay, yeah. that's, that's fine. fine. And, and at the end, it says, learners to practice with more examples. Uh, so it will help the teacher to see how well learners are following and how well they are making progress. Oh, okay. In regards to the lesson. Good, good. Uh-huh. It also helps the teacher to know where the problems is when working with the kids because when with the learners in the sense that whenever they are doing the regular and the irregular ones, you'll be able to identify where they are having problems. So you identify those particular problems. Oh, okay. okay. Um which group hasn't given us assessment for? Hey, my honorable TZ group. Okay. So we are taking the um, the II engage learners to measure up with the ruler and calculate the actual perimeter and compare the answers. Okay. And we see that as the learners are comparing the answers, they will be correcting themselves and then in that they will be assessing themselves as peers. Okay. All right. Um, don't you think that is that has a connection to assessment as? Uh huh. So we are doing four. So as they are assessing themselves as peers, okay. it is helping them to um, like it's it's helping the lesson itself. In that as the teacher is as um, is there, the learners are assessing themselves, and then they are um, building up on what they are doing. Okay. 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 All right. Um, we are doing well. We are doing well. That's that's great. Fine. Excellent. So let's move on to assessment of Fufu. will start with us. So with the key, um, that's where you can get assessment of. Uh, it says review lesson with learners by giving them a task to solve in their workbooks. And then I think my colleague. Will... Okay, so... Your learned colleague. Yes. Uh -huh. So I can see we have another learned colleague in IT, the IT wizard. Sir Festus, can you add up for us, please? No, so, Madam has raised an objection. Uh huh. Fufu group, we are waiting. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, please, reflection. Review lesson with learners by giving them a task to solve in their ways. This is assessment of because it is done at the end of the lesson in the form of exercise or assignment. Okay, that's fine. So it could also be homework. Very good. Very good. Um, is it? In every lesson, mm -hmm. at the end of the lesson, we want to find out if the learners have grasped the concepts. So in this particular session, that is the review lesson with learners by giving them a task to solve. In their web books, that okay. will make the facilitator know whether they've understood the concepts 
and whether they are ready to what you know practice what Once they have back, learned they've understood whatever concept they've achieved oh, okay. and then the lesson so in this we classify it what assessment of oh okay okay that's fine good madam wants to add up assessment of because one the lesson is over and now this time we are doing it individually so it can be um, homework or classwork everybody is doing it in his or her book for the teacher or the facilitator to know that this is where you know to this is how you got this and this is it so it becomes assessment of oh okay okay that's fine then so we can also say that end of term examination is as is also assessment of sure yes. sure exactly <laughs> because that is done at the, the end, end of the term of the term yes i also want to ask something okay so you can uh, uh, the k aspect is also assessment of learning because at that particular area the teacher will reflect with the learners on what uh, he or learned. she has taken them through. Oh, okay. And after that, he will give them an assignment to do. The feedback that the learners will give to the uh, teacher will enable him to uh, assess his level of progress in the lesson. And it will also help the learners to be able to identify what they have been able to learn at the end of the lesson. Thank you. Very good. We have all done very good. That in fact, I, I, I like the way you came out with your access. That is excellent. So, um, we, we will have to do a model lesson. And Mr. Seth appeared to do that. So, will take us through a model lesson. So, sir, you are welcome. You. you can continue with my activities for this session so he will take over okay. from me good afternoon colleagues good afternoon. Um, my duty this afternoon is to give a model lesson in mathematics based on a sample lesson plan Regular and irregular shapes. The whole class. 
parameter of regular and irregular shifts. All right, so my learning indicator is that by the end of this session, all of us should be able to add the lengths of regular and irregular shifts to obtain perimeter. So, my indicator. So let us all read our indicator. Lenses can add the size lengths of regular and irregular shifts to find perimeter. Very good. Now let's look at a few key words. Now someone from Otto group should read our first keyword. Regular sheets. Again. Regular sheets. Another person from KK group should read our second keyword. Irregular sheets. Again. Irregular sheets. And TZ. Yes, madam. Again. That's brilliant. This each group discuss the meaning of our key terms and word and then write it down you share it with your colleagues then you share it with the class yeah the key terms We are talking about digital literacy, so if you have your phones here, you can use your phones. Time up. Now let's share whatever we have come up with, with the entire class. So Fufu Group. We said that perimeter is the total distance around the edge of a shape. And a regular shape has all its sides. That, that's good. Thank you very much. Let's give them flowers. Okay, so um, TZ, give us the meaning of um, irregular shape. An irregular shape has sides and angles of different measures. Okay. And then, Otto. Okay. For a regular, regular, yeah, regular shapes, they are shapes which, whose sides are usually equal? Whose sides are usually, usually what? Equal. Equal. So, we can say regular equal sides. Irregular different sides. And then perimeter, um, you said perimeter. What definition? Please come up with the definition again so that we note it. Yes. 
Okay, so we said that perimeter is the total distance around the edge of a shape. All right. Now, in your groups, we are going to play a very beautiful game. So, now in your groups, the, the name of the game is Double Up Game. Double Up Game. Shall we all repeat? Double Up Game. Again. Double Up Game. Good. So, I'll, when I mention a number, or when your colleague mentions a number, for example, two, it will be your duty to mention the double, which is like what? Four. four, very good. Then the next person can also double the four to get eight. The person who is not able to mention is out, all right? Uh -huh. The person who is not able to mention is out. Then you continue doing it until one person wins. I hope it is clear. All right, so I'm giving you um, one minute. Please play the game among yourself. Choose any number of your choice. Uh -huh. And then choose who to start from. Okay, time up. Okay, so I'm going to play a short video of what we are treating today. So I'll ask Sergio to. Please, you wait. You listen or you watch the video carefully, after which I will give you um, these things to write what you heard and share with your group members. After which I will give you some problems on perimeter. Then you try it on your own, then you share your answers with your friends. So listen attentively. All right, so let's, let's watch the video. Hi, welcome to Math Antics. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about an important concept in geometry called perimeter. Perimeter is just a fancy math term that means the distance or length around a shape. But what exactly does the distance around a shape mean? Well, distance or length is a one-dimensional quantity that we can measure with units like centimeters, inches, or miles. That means that perimeter is also a one-dimensional quantity that we can measure with units of length. For example, the perimeter of a shape wouldn't be just 10, but it could be 10 centimeters. Or instead of being just 25, it could be 25 miles. The units are really important when you're talking about perimeter. Okay, but what exactly do we mean by around a shape? It seems like there would be a lot of different ways to go around a shape. Some of them would be short, and some of them would be very long. Well, perimeter means the absolute shortest distance possible around a shape. That would be the distance you'd get if you trace the path exactly around the border or edge of a shape. A good way to see what perimeter is, is to imagine that you could walk right along the edge of a shape, like this five-sided polygon. Imagine starting at one of the polygon's vertices, and then walking along each side until you got all the way back to the point that you started from. The total distance you traveled would be the perimeter of that shape. In this case, if the length of each side of the polygon was 10 meters, the total length you would travel along all five sides would add up to 50 meters. Another good way to see what perimeter is, is to imagine that you could take a shape, like this square, and break it at one of its corners. Then you could unfold the shape until it formed a straight line. The length of that line is the perimeter of the shape. Doing this helps you understand why perimeter is a one-dimensional quantity.
even though it applies to two-dimensional shapes like this square. It's one-dimensional because it's the distance of the lines that go around the two-dimensional shape. Okay, so now that you know what perimeter is, how do we measure or calculate it for different geometric shapes? Well, that depends on the shapes. Finding the perimeter of shapes that have curves, like circles or hearts or things like that, can be tricky. In fact, we'll wait and talk about the perimeter of a circle in another video. In this video, we're just going to focus on how to find the perimeter of polygons. Since polygons are made from only straight sides, it's easy to find their perimeter. If you know the length of each side, all you have to do is add them up, and the total length you end up with is the perimeter of the polygon. Let's try doing that with a few examples so you see how it works. The first polygon we'll try is a triangle. This triangle has three sides that are each a different length. Three centimeters, four centimeters, and five centimeters. Now, to find the perimeter of the triangle, all we have to do is add up the lengths of those three sides. Three plus four plus five equals 12. But don't forget, it's not just 12, it's 12 centimeters. Always remember to also put down the units of the perimeter. Okay, that was easy. Let's try another one. This time our polygon is a rectangle, and you can see that the shorter sides are each 5 meters long, and the longer sides are each 10 meters long. So let's add them all up. We can add up the sides in any order we want to, as long as we don't forget any sides or accidentally count any of them twice. And I think I'll add up the two short sides first. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Next, I'll add up the two longer sides. 10 plus 10 equals 20. And now, if I add up those two answers, I'll get the total for all four sides. 10 plus 20 equals 30. So, the perimeter of this rectangle is 30. Meters! <laughs> you thought I was going to forget my units, didn't you? Not this time. Ah, here's another good example. This is a six-sided regular polygon. A regular polygon means that all its sides are exactly the same length. And that's good, because this diagram only shows the length of one side. 4 centimeters. But since the polygon is regular, we know that all the other sides are also 4 centimeters long. Now, we could just add up all the sides like we did before, but since they're all the same, we can use multiplication as a shortcut. That's because multiplication is really just repeated addition. All we have to do is multiply the number of sides, 6, by the length of the sides, 4 centimeters. 6 times 4 equals 24. So that means the total perimeter must be 24. 24 what? Oh, the centimeters. That's better. Oops. And this formula works for any regular polygon, no matter how many sides there are. If the sides are all the same length, you can just multiply the number of sides by the side length, and you have the perimeter. OK, let's try one more example. This polygon also has six sides, but it's not a regular polygon. The sides are different lengths, and this one's really tricky because they only show us the length of four of the sides. The other two are missing. So how can we figure them out? Problems like this come up all the time in math. Problems where you aren't quite given all the information. When you have this kind of problem, the key is to use what you do know to figure out what you don't know. Here's what I mean. Look closely at the two vertical sides that we do know the lengths of. Four inches and six inches. Now. Imagine that those two vertical sides could be moved straight across to the other side, the side that we don't know the length of. By doing that, you can see that the missing length would just be the combination of the two vertical lengths that we do know, 4 inches and 6 inches. And since 4 plus 6 equals 10, the missing vertical side must be 10 inches long. Notice that we can do the same thing for the horizontal sides that we do know. If we imagine those moving down to the side that we don't know, we see that its length must be equal to the combination of those two lengths. 10 inches plus 5 inches equals 15 inches. There, we've used the lengths that we did know to figure out the lengths that we didn't know. And now that we know the lengths of all the sides, we can just add them all up to get the perimeter. 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 15. And then 15 plus 15 equals 30. 30 plus 10 equals 40. And last of all, 40 plus 10 equals 50. So, the sum of all the sides is 50 inches. And that's the perimeter of this shape. And that's the end of this lesson. We've learned that perimeter... So, 
you have seen how the perimeter is calculated. So just write down what you heard and then share with your friends. After which I'll give you your problems to time up. I guess you have enjoyed working. Um, let me call, I think, two uh, randomly. I'll call two people to come to the board. Solve. So, uh, TZ, you solve number one for us. Um, so, madam, kindly come to the board and give us your solution for number one. You, and then, after that, um, Sir Josiah will also come and solve number two, just for clarification, and then I'll give you your homework. to give you a, a sticker let's give them no no let's give them a fantastic clap fantastic that's good now Sergio so we give her a sticker brilliant brilliant so come forward and take it. where should I yeah to the group you can <laughs> All right, so we take the second example from. Here. So from here to here, this side is 2 centimeters. You add this side, 
to this side. And this side is from ten centimeters. So you add this one to this one. Then you add it to this side, and then you add it to this side. So you all are going to get 26 centimeters. Okay. That's the perimeter of the object. So amazing. So I'll give you a sticker too. Your st your your sticker is amazing. So you can you can you can put it over there. All right. All too soon. Um, take your your pens. Just jot down something that you have learned from this lesson that you are taking home. After which I will give you your homework to go and complete. All right, so let's now look at this shape that I'm going to draw on the board. So, so far, what we have looked at, we have looked at rectangles and the triangles that we looked at were equilateral triangles, which had all the sides to be equal. So, let's take one example of a triangle which has different sides. Okay, so, so it can be this way, it can be that way, it can be that way. All right, so let us assume here is 10 centimeters, here is 5 centimeters, and here is, let's say, 8 centimeters. All right, so someone should come to the board and solve this one. Um, the, the, the madam over there, please come to the board. Can you please explain to us what you have done? Okay. So, with perimeter, we are adding all the sides. Yeah. So, I took the 10, the 5, and the 8, and I brought them together. I brought the 10 down. I added this two. I brought it together, and I got my time. Oh, that is fantastic. Fantastic. Right, and let me see if I have fantastic here. Oh, okay. She says she likes fabulous. So. Lisa clap, please. She team. Well done. Well done. Well done. That's good. That's good. So, please write down one thing or some of the things that you have learned from this lesson that you are taking home and then share with your friends after which you take your homework. Okay, so as you are writing, you take your homework. Yeah. So that when you go, these ones are regular. I'll take them tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Okay, so. All right, sir. Okay, so now that you've written what you've learned, can you please share? I'll take one from each group to share what you've learned with the class. Uh, yes, Mr. Furry. We have learned how to calculate a perimeter. That is adding the size of the sheets. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, Sir Lawrence Group. Uh, Madam, kindly share what you need. Yeah, so, this 
in jelly. We measure with units of length. Okay. So we shouldn't forget that when providing the last answer. Yes, it's very, very important that we should not forget our units. Very good. Yes, um, family. I've also learned that perimeter is the total distance around an object or a ship. Okay, that's brilliant. And lastly, I've also learned that regular polygons have equal size and irregular polygons have different sides. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right, on this note, we come to the end of our lesson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that was a, an excellent performance. Um, let's learn this club. Um, the German club. Uh, are, you, are you watching? So it's done this way. It's called the German club. So be on your feet, be on your feet. Let's give Mr. Dan so a German club. was wonderful that was wonderful so let's continue with our session um what we're going to do now is we are going to reflect on what he thought just model the lesson and we are to reflect on what he did so i'm going to ask you some questions and then we answer using our national teacher standards. And yes. Are we here? Yes. All right. So in which of the domains has methodology talks about the strategies of teaching, the methods of teaching in which of the domains. So let's go through and then which of them? You have three domains, right? So which of them tells us or talks on how to deliver lessons, how to teach strategies? Mr. Fori. Professional practice, the third domain. The third domain. That is very good. So let's all go to 3A. 3A, page 25. 3A, I don't know which of them I'm using, but I have 3A. 3A, we are on the table, please. And um, please, someone from KNK Group should read for us the standard. The standard. Professional practice, managing the learning environment. The teacher has long term into brackets, weekly, timely objectives of what and how learners should learn. Lesson objectives are clear to learners at the beginning of lessons, and their progress toward these is monitored. Lesson structures and tasks vary. Ta target females and males equally and are picked just beyond what learners already know to stretch and inspire. Using whole class, group, pair, individual work and ICT to expand or consolidate learning. So that is the example. That is the example. But when you go to the standard, it, it tells us how to plan and then deliver our lessons in varied ways. Okay. So Dix talks about the methods, the methodology. So when you go to the examples, it tells you some of the things you, we have to perform using varied methods. Are we okay? So quickly, let's go to um, 3E. 3E. The teacher uses whole class dialogue, questioning, group, that is fair work, collaborative learning, demonstrations, explanations, experimentation, projects. That is inquiry-based learning, 
different learning groupings, peer teaching, support manipulatives, modeling, field trips, games, role play, sound, okay. storytelling. So these are some of the strategies they are mentioning that we can use in our lessons. Please, are we okay? Okay, so let me ask this also. Which of the domains talks about the professional development? Which of the domains talk about professional development? Yes, sir, Felix. Professional values and attitude. Which, is do which of the domains? Is it the first or the, the second? second? The, the, first the first domain, yes. The first domain talks about professional development. Now, let's go to the assessment. 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 Which of the domains talks about assessment? Please, another person. Another person, please. Professional practice. Okay, can we use our table? Professional practice. And Madam, you were saying something. Madam Sandra, you are asking which of the domains, and I said the third one. The the third professional one. practice, that's where we can find assessment. Oh, okay. So, with the assessment, let's go to 3M. Let's go to 3M. 3M. One person from auto group should read for us. 3M. Only the standard, please. Identifies and remediates learners' difficulties or misconceptions. That's referring learners whose needs lie outside the competency of the teacher. Okay, so let's go to the example. The example, yes. So learners' misconceptions about... No, uh, sorry, the third... Indicator. The indicator. The, le the last one. Okay, so learners' excitement. That's lesson evaluations by teacher and mentor. Okay, so that is assessment. Are we are we okay? Yes. All right. So quickly, let's go to resources. How we use resources using the standards. The NTS. Uh huh. Okay, so let me help you with that. That will be 3J. 3J. A member from KNK should please read for us. 3J, we want the standard. Produces and uses a variety of teaching and learning resources that enhance learning, including ICT. Let's not forget when we are writing our lesson notes, when we are preparing it, to use this. We cannot write our lesson notes in isolation with the national teachers standards. Alright, so finally, we're going to write what the teacher did that has a relation with the NTS. Are we okay? Yes, so one each. One each. What the teacher did in relation to the NTS in the lesson. And then you share with us. Okay, please share with us. So, a member from the FUFU group. So, in terms of assessment, the teacher made use of everything. Like, he yeah, assessed the learners, use assessment as assessment for and assessment of during the lessons. Very good. Which is it? Which part of the NTS can we find that? 
We just mentioned them. Good. 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 That's fine. Uh-huh. Um, auto group, what do you have for us? The teacher used the ICT to make the lesson easier and lighter. Okay, so why in the NCS can we find us? Find yes, the three three G. Yes. Three G. Good. Professional professional practice. Okay. Alright. Thank you very much. Um TZ. You want to add up? Okay. Teacher uses whole class dialogue, question, group or pair group, collaborative learning, demonstration, ICT tips in the lesson. That can be found, uh, that is 3E, professional practice. Okay. That's fine. And then, Kenke, what do you have for us? Okay, use the ICT tool. Uh, and we can find that in the 3E. Yes, yes, That is so wonderful. In fact, today's session has been extremely um, um, interesting. So, what we are going to do now is that don't forget to observe your colleague when he or she is teaching. In our next session, you have to tell the house what you observed from your colleague teacher when you were teaching. And then our next session will be on session five. Session five. Thank you so much for your time today and have a nice day.